My name is Deborah Lupton and I'm the leader of the Vitalities Lab at the Centre for Social Research in Health and Social Policy Research Centre at the University of New South Wales, Sydney. And this webinar is about using storyboards as a research method. Why choose the storyboarding method for social research? The storyboard idea originally comes from pre-production filmmaking, so when filmmakers are planning out their shots. It involves making a comic strip that tells a story with both words and drawings. It helps people to get their ideas down on paper and communicate them easily. It's a creative form of self-expression. And for social researchers, the images and words can be analysed together as research materials. The project I'm going to talk about in this webinar is the Blood, Sweat, Tears digital workshop. The key research objectives was to use the design method of storyboarding to challenge pre-service health education teachers to work together to think creatively and differently about digital health. We also wanted to introduce pre-service teachers to the method as a pedagogical technique for their own students. So the idea was that they would learn about how to do storyboarding and they could take that technique into their own classrooms to help work with their students to learn about health education and digital health. We wanted to experiment with our methods as a design sociology research project and we wanted to analyse the materials generated by the participants as research artefacts. The process of the storyboarding method. First you define your prompts and these will be in relation to your research objectives. What connections, relationships, people, practices, places and things do you want participants to incorporate in their storyboards? You provide materials for participants. This might include giving them a template to work with. And there's an example at the bottom of the slide is of a storyboard template. Or just add a sheet of, or just give them a sheet of A4 paper that can be divided into six squares. You can ask them to work individually in pairs or small groups to conceptualise and draw the narrative. And they can be broken up into smaller groups if you've got a larger group. You ask people to explain the decisions they made in making their storyboards. And these discussions should be audio or video recorded and then you can use the discussions themselves as research materials for your project. then you can put together the completed storyboards and the recorded discussion, discussions for your research materials. In the Blood, Sweat, Tears digital workshop, participants were provided with a storyboard template and asked to select one element from four lists. And these were aspects of the body, aspects to do with people, different places, and different feelings. So we asked each group to choose one element from these four lists and then work together to conceptualise a new digital health device. Once they had chosen their four elements, the groups were asked to engage with the following questions and tasks. What problem is your digital health device designed to help? What can it do? What does it look like? How does it interact with the user? Is it worn on the body, touched, carried, inserted inside? Who uses it? Who won't want to use it? Who else can use the information it generates? Use the storyboard to tell a story about a typical user of this device. When they were completed, the storyboards were presented to the wider group. Analysis of the storyboards. What did we look for? So we focused on the content, the images and words used in the storyboards, and we examined what types of devices were imagined by the participants and their ideas about intended users and the kinds of health or medical issues the devices they imagined were invented to ameliorate or support. Our main findings were that the storyboard method worked well as an engaging and creative exercise for the participants and to generate insights for us as researchers on the ways in which they conceptualised and imagined the role of digital health technologies. We got a lot of positive feedback from the students themselves who told us that they enjoyed interacting with this method and creating their storyboards. Also, the storyboards largely presented visions of digital health technologies that relied on individualistic behaviour change. So that was quite an interesting outcome. 
we were interested because these health education students had been given quite a lot of material that challenged them to think about the social determinants of health. But yet when we asked them to think about digital health, they did tend to focus on, on devices that were about individual behaviour change. So in future iterations of using this method, we will consider adding further hands-on activities such as asking participants to engage in a critical analysis of health apps as sociocultural artefacts. And we think if we do a scaffolded approach where we do perhaps the critical analysis of apps first and then follow that with a session on, in which the students are asked to invent their own digital health device, then maybe they might think more critically about the individualistic nature of a lot of digital health technologies. For further reading, there's an article from, that we published out of this project that was published in the Health Education Journal. And for other sources on this method, there's an article by Cross and Warwick Booth who used these storyboards in their own participatory research. And there's also a blog post that I wrote about using graphic narratives for research, translation and engagement.